Widows here. I am a global lash trainer, a lash judge, a guest speaker, and a master lash artist with nine years experience. And I'm also the founder of Eyelash Excellence. So I specialize in high quality technical sets of eyelash extensions. I also teach these techniques to my students. And over the years, I have traveled the globe training thousands and thousands of students in all techniques from basic to advanced. And I've had the privilege of guest speaking at hundreds of lash events, as well as judging at some of the top lash competitions. So here's some of the products that we're gonna be using today. I've put links in the video description underneath the video. We offer global fast shipping on all of our products and they are cruelty free and 100% safe. So from the left, we've got Foaming Lash Cleanser. Then we've got our Retention Aid to help with retention. We've got our Magic Tape and our Under Eye Pads to secure the lower lashes. We're gonna be using Onyx Adhesive, which is a great one for beginners. C Curl Lashes in 0.15 and Short Tip and Long Tip. thing we're going to do is cleanse the eyes using a foaming lash cleanser it's important that we use products that are designed for what we do because other products can leave an oily residue on the lashes so get in there give them a really really good cleanse it's also important that you cleanse above the eyelid as well because oils can come down off the eyelid and affect the bonds and you also need to cleanse under the eye because that is where the pads are going to be going and if you don't you will find that your pads will not stick during your treatment. We're then going to be using micro brushes with foaming lash cleanser to really get into those lashes because a lot of the time you'll find that cotton wool rounds will just not remove that debris that's really low down. So you want to get in there and you want to give it a really, really good scrub. As you can see, I'm scrubbing the lash line, the bases of the lashes, just to ensure everything is really nice and clean. So next I'm using water. Uh, you can either use cooled down boiled kettle water or saline solution, just to make sure it's nice and sterile. And this is going to remove any residue that's left from the foaming lash cleanser. I'm then using micro brushes to apply a pH balance to the natural lashes. This is going to do what it says on the tin. It balances the pH in the natural lashes and ensures you get a good grab of the extensions and amazing retention. It's such a game changer. I never lash without it. I'm applying magic tape to the inner corners this is a great tape it's not too sticky like some micropore tape can be so this is going to secure the inner lashes and then I'm going to come and apply a pad to the rest of the eye it just means that the pad doesn't have to do all of the work pulling down the outer corner of the eye and placing the pad about one millimeter away from the water line we don't want it touching and then I always check with my dental mirror just to make sure that the pad is nice and secure and the eye isn't open. At times you may need to adjust the pad by just pulling it down on the outer corner. So there are some rules when it comes to lash mapping and using the correct length. So I never extend the natural lash by more than three millimeter maximums. There are exceptions when you're advanced therapist, but not at this level. Any length longer than three millimeters will be too heavy, twist and droop over time, so longer is not better, trust me. And long lengths distort the face, they look unappealing. Use of a stronger curl will always give the illusion of more length. We're gonna start with a C curl because we're beginners, but you know, you can use stronger over time. And never extend the length of the natural lashes in the inner and outer corners, match only. So the lashes in inner and outer corners are always the shortest and they're very delicate. If you do lengths that are too long, not only is it going to distort the face and make the eye look droopy, but it's going to put too much strain on those natural lashes and it will cause damage. So they have to be very, very short. It also keeps a nice shape into the set and it keeps the height over the middle or the outer third. So by having very short inners and outers, you get distinction between short and long lengths and it gives you very, very nice shaping of that set. So do not fall into the trap of one length across the eye or very, very long lengths. 
Now this is the map that we're going to be doing today, something similar to this. I've got a 6mm here in the inner corner, but I haven't done that in this video. However, we have got a 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 being the longest, where the eyebrow actually peaks. And then we drop down to 11, 10, 9 and 8. Again, it's going to give very, very nice shape and it's going to really lift the eye and make that client look a lot more awake. So the first thing I do is draw my lines that mark the inner and outer section of the eye in case I have to take the pad off for whatever reason we know where that zone is and then I'm going to put a line straight down the middle of the eye because anything from the outside towards the outer of the brow is going to be my longest zone area before I decrease. So I'm going to split that zone in half like so and then I'm going to make that zone there my longest length which is going to be 12 millimetres. I then like to go in and put my tiny little inner corner, which is going to be a seven here. Remember, we want to keep that very, very nice and short there to protect those lashes. And then this zone, I'm going to split into four zones. So there's going to be three lines. So I'm going to put a line in and put my 11, another line, put my 10, another line. And then that's going to give me my nine and my eight millimeters. You can even put a little seven on the outer corner if you wanted to, if that natural lash was very short there. I'm then going to put my 11 in because I've got to get from 11, 10, 9, 8 to 7. Put my 10 in and then split that one in half and then I can put my 8 and my 9 in there and I've got a nice lash map that's going to give me nice height over the brow area. Now I'm going to use some tape. You don't need this on all clients but sometimes it can help to lift lashes up off the pad. This client's lashes actually grow quite straight downwards so I need this on her. So you can see how just with that tape it just lifts the eye and then I'm going to stick it to the top of her brow. Again please use tape that isn't too sticky like my magic tape otherwise it's a nightmare to get off. I'm just checking to make sure I haven't opened the eye which can happen. If your eye is open you will get a chemical burn on it where the vapours from the adhesives will attach to the eyeball. Doing exactly the same in the inner corner here and again going in and just checking I haven't opened the eye. If you have you have to readjust the tape and you can use a little bit of tape just to help pull the pad away from the eye if that client is complaining that that pad feels like it's cutting in but always check with that client how that pad feels and again I'm doing the other eye here but like I said it's really really important that you ask that client how those pads feel So for beginners, I always tell them to put two little squares of double-sided tape on their pads so that we can load the extensions on there, as you can see that I'm doing. Now, I've loaded a 12mm here because I'm going to go straight over the middle of the eye into a 12mm zone and work symmetrically between the eyes, building a frame, which I'm then going to fill with the extensions. So I've gone in isolated in my 12mm zone, tiny bit of adhesive, one millimeter, place onto the natural lash, let it settle and grab. When I'm happy it's secure, I let go and adjust if need be. Keep that isolation on for about four seconds to allow that glue to set enough so that you can come away without other lashes sticking to it, which are called stickies. Because I've done a 12 on that eye, I'm going to come and do a 12 on this eye, place that on the sticky pad, go in and isolate over my 12mm zone, get a lash, pick my extension up, slowly in and out the adhesive, one millimetre only. It should be completely seamless, like you can't even see it. Place close to the lash line, about half a millimetre away, no closer, never stick the lash to the eyelid. It will actually irritate the eye and cyanoacrylate, which is the glue should not come into contact with the skin. So now I'm going towards the outer corner, so I'm probably picking up a nine here, placing that on the pad, going and isolating in my nine millimetre zone. Taking my time to find that isolation, pick the lash up, in, slowly out, slowly seamless amount, can't even see it. Place it on, feel the grab, slowly release and adjust, and hold, hold, hold to let that set. Having a little look where I'm going in a 9mm zone, so I'm going to be picking up a 9mm extension, and I'm going to be placing that on the pad, and going back in and isolating as we did before. So like I said, always build a frame. We need to build a frame because if something must happen, that client had to run out. We want a symmetrical set on both eyes. Because if you only lashed one eye and you started at the outer corner and went in and she had to run out, she's going to look a little bit silly, isn't she? I've made that mistake before as a young artist, so don't do that. So build a frame on both eyes so that if you were to shine a mirror down the middle of the eye, it would look completely symmetrical and that client could get up and leave no matter how much you've got on there. So here you're going to see me speeding it up a little bit, just showing you how I'm working across the eye, like I said, building symmetry as I go. 
Now lash extensions are going to take you about three hours to start off as a beginner and over time you want to be aiming for about two hours per set of classic lashes. For anything like volume you're going to be a little bit longer, normally about three hours even up to four or five. Now close up you're going to see me working on lashes. Now it's important to say that if you have a tiny little lash in that set that's called an allergen, a baby lash, you may not be able to lash him at the same length that you've got. So if you're in a 12mm zone, a little baby lash could not support a 12mm. So you'd need to put a tiny little one on like him, like a 7mm, or leave him alone. Baby lashes cannot support long lashes, you will cause damage. And repeat custom is about your clients coming back with healthy lashes. Now we refresh our bead of adhesive every 20 minutes and give the lashes a brush through. If all your lashes fall off, you know that your bonds have been compromised. And this is why temperature and humidity is so very important. And I'll put a link up the top to a temperature and humidity video that I've got that teaches you how you need to work with your adhesive and control your levels for your glue to set properly. Because if you don't, all your lashes will fall off. So I'm continuing to build my set as I go. As you can see, I've built my frame and now I'm just filling in. And again, I brush every now and then, probably every 15 minutes when I change my glue or 20 minutes I change my glue. And keep checking with your dental mirror. It makes you see that the eye is still closed. Some clients' eyes can open during the set. And also I'm checking to make sure I've got no lashes out of place. From where you're sitting behind the eye, you have a two-dimensional view. With a mirror, you can see where there's a lash that's not quite right, like I've got here. So I needed to remove that. If you leave it in there, it's going to spoil the top line of the effect. So always check as you go. And I'm just going to come in here and just peel off like a banana peel method this lash that I'm not happy with because he will spoil that set. Now keep going, just keep filling the set. You want to aim to 100% as much as possible, but when you're new and mentally, you may run out of steam. And here I'm just stretching the inner corners. Some clients' inners are really difficult to get to, so you can use a little bit of tape horizontally from the middle to the outer third and just pull the tape across and it will stretch the eye. Just be mindful that your zones have now moved, so just make sure you know where your zone is on your lash map. And give a little brush and a check with a dental mirror before we finish the set off. So now we've got to check for sticky. So what stickies are is where lashes are stuck together. And this can happen in the set. So you need to go through with your tweezers every single extension that you've applied and check the bases to make sure that you haven't got extensions stuck together. And if they have, you need to peel them apart. So grab the tips of each extension and just gently peel them apart from each other. Sometimes one might fall off. If it does, you can just go back and replace it. So you need to be setting aside about five to 10 minutes at the end of your set to do this, because if you've got stickies in your set, it will inhibit the natural growth patterns and it will cause damage of those natural lashes. And then finally, give them a nice little brush so that they're gonna be nice and fluffy when your client goes to open their eyes at the end of this set. So finally we're going to remove the tape and the pads. So I like to use my tweezers just to grab the end of the tape. Pull the tape taut with your finger as you can see I'm pulling the skin. Do not rip this off like a plaster, it's going to hurt. Again this is why it's important that you use paper tape and not things like microfiber tape which actually absorb the oils and can be really difficult to get off. If you're coming across the brow just make sure you follow the direction of the hair growth so you don't give them a brow wax. And to remove the pad just very very slowly to make sure that they're not stuck to any of the lashes. So really slow, gentle movement, don't whip it off. And again with the tape, just see how I'm pulling the skin taut with my finger, slowly, slowly, slowly. And I do like to use a little handheld fan just to blow any vapours away from the adhesives. Again, it's important that you use safe adhesives. I've got a video I'll link to this. And I'm just checking with the fat end of my tweezers and not the sharp end, just to make sure that we've got no lashes stuck together before I get the client to open their eyes. After three to five minutes, the client can open, there should be no stinging or burning, and your client can be ready to have her aftercare and go home. And this is the finished set. As you can see, nice quality extensions, close to the lash line, no excess adhesive, there's no stepping in my lash line, completely at the same level, and this is a nice classic set. And this is going to be what you're aiming for as a beginner. You have to learn your classic sets, you have to learn to walk before you can run, before you can and move into hybrids or volume or mega volume. Do not jump straight into volume guys, it is advanced lashing. You have to learn the bread and butter of what we do, otherwise you're gonna set yourself up for a fail. I know we all wanna do it straight away, but we can't, trust me, we cannot. 
So please come and follow me on Instagram for lots of hints and tips and more videos all about lashing. My Instagram is Eyelash Excellence, that's my business page, and my private one is Frankie Widows. Feel free to drop me a DM on there, I'll always answer. Facebook is Eyelash Excellence Frankie Widows, and the online shop is www.eyelashexcellence.com, where, like I said, we have 100% safe and cruelty free products that we ship all across the globe. They really are the best out there because, through my experience of the years, I've tried and tested pretty much every product out there and I will only introduce to my brand what does work and that I train my students on and that I sell internationally across the globe. Now this is just a snippet of how we apply eyelash extensions. Please do not learn this off YouTube guys, this is just a snippet like I said. To learn lash extensions well, you have to take a course. You have to take a structured step-by-step -step course that is a minimum of two days long. There is so much that you need to learn, the health and safety, the science behind what we do, all the advanced, intricate bits that you don't see on here that take, like I said, hours and hours and hours. I do two day courses and even then we are still pushing it. So please do not watch too many YouTube videos. Unfortunately, a lot of the videos on there are crap. They're incorrect techniques and it's shocking what some people are teaching. Not all of them, you can pick up some good information, but don't try and learn off YouTube. You owe it to yourselves and you also owe it to your clients. You would not want to be lashed by somebody that has learned off YouTube. You also need to be able to have insurance so that you are protected and your client is protected and that you cannot get through learning off YouTube. You are going to butcher your clients, trust me. So if you like what you see and you want to learn this online, we do offer this course online or if you are in the UK or you want to come to the UK, we offer training here. Now I offer the most advanced technical lash courses there are because I've got nine years of experience. I am a judge at the top lash competitions where I judge the best lash artists in the world. I travel the globe teaching my techniques. I also guest speak on topics of lash extensions. This means that my knowledge has to be the highest that it is and I always have to stay up to date because if I didn't I wouldn't be able to do my job but it also means I teach my students to the highest level that there is please do not fall victim to poor courses since covid we have seen a massive introduction of poor courses coming out there and guys you get what you pay for so you don't need to be paying thousands and thousands but if you are seeing courses for $50, $100, $150, or if you're in the UK, again, £50, £100, £150, you are not going to get a good course. No good trainer is going to sell their skills that they have spent years learning, their own investment into that, which costs thousands and thousands and thousands. And also the time it's taken for them to get to that level, the time it takes for them to create their training material, get their courses accredited, you know, pay for their fees of it it just isn't going to be a good course guys so please do shop around if you are looking for a trainer there are many good trainers out there but you need to shop around research them who are they who's going to be training you what's their background how long have they been doing lashes for what is their lash work like see if they're on youtube because if they're on youtube you can see what type of style they teach in you know are they advanced what are their techniques like feel free to ask questions you have the right to ask as many questions as you want do you get a good manual with your course do you get a good kit with your course do you get unlimited aftercare support from your trainer and can you contact that trainer you'd be surprised at how many people reach out to their trainer and their trainers never ever get back to them so like i said please invest in yourself because otherwise you are going to have to go back and retrain and sadly I retrained so many students that were victims of poor training either through looking for the cheapest option or just not doing their research on who they were training with and I would not want you to become another one. You can reach out to me if you want on any of my social media platforms, come and give us a follow and even if you are looking for a trainer in your area please reach out to me, I can always recommend some good lash artists that uphold the standards of the industry and offer great training. Thank you very much for watching don't forget to check out my other videos i've got tons of videos on youtube of all different aspects of lashing and if you're looking for good quality products that are going to make lashing easy because cheap products are really hard to work with and a lot of them don't hold safety regulations in an unregulated industry then come over to the eyelash excellence shop which is www.eyelashexcellence.com and we look forward to seeing you there thank you very much for watching and goodbye